And now we have to walk through problem number 65 as an example, which could be like an illustration of how cash flow statement of a small company could become filed. We are given with the income statement of uh, the company uh, we lease and statement of financial position, also known as balance sheet. And here you can see financial results for the year. This column represents gross profit. Gross profit is sales, less cost of sales. We can see here um, profit. We can see here like other expenses, etc., etc. And uh, we are given um, with a statement of financial position of balance sheet for two years, 2017, 2018. And if we look at the changes in working capital, if we look at the changes in fixed assets, we can conclude how change, how cash could change during the year. And there are a piece of additional information about motor van sold during the year. And we have to consider that also together with the change in provision of bad debt. And uh, we are given with a template. The template is the financial statement pro forma, which is recommended by IS7. And for your convenience, I've uploaded PDF into our material so you can use it now and of course each and every financial statement has to have name correct name here you can see the name of the company the name of the statement the period of time because cash flow statement as well as profit and loss statement is compiled for the financial period for the year in our case and we have um, here the list of lines which should be filled in as I said before, cash flow statement should be started with the operating profit. We can find operating profit of a company in a given information. Since we are not told whether the final profit calculated is net operating, we can assume that this is the operating of profit before interest and tax because we do not see any interest expense or tax expense here. So we can assume that this amount is an operating profit and we start with that amount, 16,122. So that would be operating profit to start with. And now we have to adjust that operating profit, adjusting for non-cash items here, depreciation, profit on disposal, and increase or decrease in provision for doubtful debt in order to come closer to cash movement. So what for depreciation? We have to look for depreciation line in our uh, income statement. And um, thanks God we have that line because sometimes you are not given with that information and you have to calculate it somehow. But we have a line that reads depreciation and 1,090 pounds should be added to the profit in order to come closer to cash movement because it's not cash expense. So 1,099 should be added back. Profit on disposal of non-current asset. In order to calculate profit on disposal of non-current assets, we have to compare non-current assets uh, as at the beginning of the year and non-current assets at the end of the year, making sure that something was sold. But actually in that particular tax, we are told that one motor van was sold for the specific amount of money during the year. And if we are lucky enough to have the special line, like now we have an income statement read, uh, which reads profit or loss on sale of fixed asset, we can just take that amount and use it in a proper way in cash flow statement. Otherwise, we have to calculate profit or loss on disposal. Since we are given the profit on uh, sale, which was used in calculation of profit for the year by adding it, by adding it to our other incomes, now we have to deduct that amount because profit on disposal, it's not a cash receipt. It's just the financial result which was calculated using a cruel concept, using a cruel principle. So now we have to deduct that amount in order to come closer to the cash movement. So that 570 should be deducted out of profit before interest and tax. And uh, we have to consider provision for doubtful debt. We are told that the company revised its provision on doubtful debt 
and it's uh, and uh, the provision on duffel debt increased by 120 and it was treated as expense in income statement under accrual basis now we have to add it back eliminating that effect of decreasing the profit because provision now for debt increase or decrease in that it's not cash movement so now we have to add back that non-cash expense then we have to consider changes in working capital as it is said here change in inventory change in receivables change in payables so let's compare inventory at the beginning of the, at the end of the year also known as stock so here we can see that inventory increased during the year and the difference between these two amounts an amount of 6855 should be deducted for the purposes of cash flow calculation why because we can assume that if company during the year not uh, other factor um, other factors being equal if company during the year bought inventory on this amount the total cash decreased by the same amount the same logic with, with receivables but we can see that accounts receivable uh, debtors here we can see the gross debtors decreased during the year that means that more debtors repays their debts to us it means that the total cash in company increased so the net change in receivables the decrease in receivables should be added for the purposes of indirect cash flow statement method cal calculation so here we are adding 1690 the difference between gross receivables at the beginning of the year it was 5490 you can see it above in the lines above highlighted by violet and at the end of the year it was 3800 and between these amounts that change should be added for the purposes of cash flow calculation and the vice versa logic for the payables we can see that uh, creditors or accounts payable increased during the year that means that cash increased also we pay less so since we pay less cash stays at the company so that change increase in payables leads to increase in cash 150. then we have to consider using the pro forma uh, interest paid and tax paid but as i said before no interest expense and no tax expense i can find in our statements um, moreover i can't see any tax payable or interest payable in statement of financial position that means that we can set zero we can uh, omit that lines because we have no information about that expenses about the payments and uh, using that figures we can calculate cash generated from operations and net cash from operating activities summing up all the amounts above that would give us 11747 this is the cash flow from operating activities the first like subtotal we can calculate using our new knowledge okay then we have to i don't i don't like the line let's make it more accurate more beautiful uh, then we have to consider any investing activities happened in the firm we have to consider any receipts from sale of non-current assets and we have to consider any payments to acquire non-current assets we are told that a motor van was sold for 2300 that means that it was cash received that's why we have to consider that total amount here as cash in because company received that cash and that amount of cash was never treated as any income in income statement only financial result out of that operation was considered and we have um, seen the line which reads profit on disposal so if an asset was sold with a profit it means that net book value of an asset was below the amount of cash received for that payments to acquire non-current asset i believe that that line is the most tricky here so let's make an analysis of non-current assets in order to understand whether 
company has bought something during the period or not. So we can see here that amount and that amount highlighted with red right now. These are net book values of an assets. So uh, net book value opening and net book value closing of an asset um, would change like that during the period. So we have net book value opening. And if nothing happens, no assets bought and no assets sold, the difference between these two amounts should be equal to depreciation chart during the year. And depreciation chart during the year is the depreciation expense. So if nothing changes, we can assume that net book value during the period decreases by the amount of depreciation charge. So if we deduct that depreciation out of the net book value opening, we should receive net book value closing, but we can see that it's not so. Uh, so we have to consider the sold item, the sold item, something was sold. What was the net book value of sold something? Net book value sold. We do know, I will change the color one more time. We do know that that sold item was sold for 2,300 and profit on disposal was 570. That means that net book value the cash uh, sale proceeds from uh, sale of fixed asset less net book value gives us profit. Can we calculate net book value of sold item? Yes, sure. The difference between these two amounts is the net book value of sold motor van, 1,730. So if we deduct 1,730, we have to receive net book value closing. And eventually we can see that if we consider opening net book value, charge depreciation for the year, depreciation expense for the year, deduct net book value of sold item, we eventually for that particular tax, re task receive net book value closing. But if that amount is not equal to the result of our equation, we have to consider something bought or maybe other disposals which could happen. But thanks God, we have uh, just justified that nothing was bought because our equation is in balance. So we can conclude that nothing was bought during the period and we could state zero here. So net cash flow from investing activities is 2,300 of cash in. And the last portion, the last section of Cash flow statement is the cash flow from investing activities. For the purposes of calculation of cash flow from investing activities, we have to consider equity section and long term uh, liability section of a balance sheet. So, no impact on income statement, only these two sections. We have to consider changes in that. So, let's look at the long term liability change. At the beginning of the year, the company owed 6,000. At the end of the year, 5,000. That means that during the year, the company repaid the part of a loan. And since the company repaid the part of a loan, it transferred money to the bank, to the other company, to the other bank. We have to consider the decrease in cash in amount of 1,000 because the portion of loan was repaid. Uh, then we have to consider changes in uh, capital. And um, we have to consider that section of balance sheet. And um, we can see that the closing, that the closing capital for the previous year, for the 2017, is the opening capital for the 2018. And the only thing which Increase the capital is the net profit earned for the period. And by the way, you can see it here like that. And then uh, the owner withdrew some amount of money during the period. Drawings are always stated uh, as a figure for the current year. It's not the cumulative something. It's not the cumulative balance for the whole years. So last year, the owner of the company withdrew 11,000. This year, the owner of the company withdrew 12,000. And half thousand 
But we can see that no cash was introduced into the capital. No shares were, were issued, no other increase in capital other than net profit earned. But we definitely can see the decrease due to withdrawal. And we have to consider that things in our cash flow statement as well. So no cash was introduced during the year into the capital, but the company, the owner withdrew 12 and a half thousand. And now we can calculate net cash flow from financing activities. That would be 13,500 with a minus sign. And now uh, we can finally calculate net change in cash. Net change in cash for the period summing up these three amounts. And eventually that would be 500. 47 only because operating activity is the activity which generates cash investing activity also generates cash but we can see that investing activity is not an activity which generates cash which um, attracts cash but it's a cash eater activity because the owner uh, withdrew large huge amount of money and no cash was introduced no, it's like normal for the uh, profitable business, I would say. And nevertheless, the total change in cash is positive, which is good, which is good. How could we check ourselves? How could we check ourselves? Why do I personally like cash flow statement problems? Because we can look at the balance sheet and we can see the bank balance or cash balance at the beginning of the year. And we can see the cash or bank balance at the end of the year. And if we compare these two amounts, eventually the difference between them should be equal to the net change in cash just calculated in cash flow statement. So I like that problems very much together with balance sheet because if you compile the balance sheet in a proper way, you will have balance. So you, you can check yourself as well as a cash flow statement. You can compare bank balances with the net change in cash calculated and if the difference between these two amounts is the same as the net change in cash uh, according to cash flow statement you are a great accountant and basically in our ca case we have opening cash of 1568 and 2115 at the end and difference between these two amounts is the same so it was a great job. I believe that example, it's like a simple example, but I believe that it's very illustrative for you. Now you can uh, try to solve something more complicated. Thank you for your attention.